surprised this week and visited with Urban Meyer and Fisher DeBerry. Both of them talked about how critical this stage of the season is. That was really interesting because the last I checked, is it still not September? But both of these coaches understand the time and place they are in the season. Air Force has three games in 17 days. That's hard on anybody. And Utah, Urban Meyer in particular, understands that they have two tough games. This one today, a short week, and they go to New Mexico, who thumped them a year ago. Well, this Utah team has won seven in a row, 12 of their last 13 games after they inserted Alex Smith in as starting quarterback. And Urban Meyer has told us he's the finest passing quarterback he's ever been around. I think he's right. You can see on film that the intelligence is incredible. Quarterbacking is about decision making, and this man makes great decisions. 21 touchdown passes, four interceptions as a starter, and you can see what he's off to do in this year. Six TDs, zero mistakes. That's incredible at this stage in his career. And you know, Kelly, it's hard to believe that Air Force quarterback Sean Carney is just a freshman. In his first start on the road last week, he earned Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Week award. Well, you can see right there what he did. 12 out of 14, 139 yards, two touchdowns, and we are talking about an Air Force quarterback. It's incredible to see the opening game that we saw him play against Cal in Colorado Springs and the growth that's taken place in this young man. They have a new leader who's going to be there for a few years. He has great moxie. What a series this has been last year. Went into three overtimes in Colorado Springs. Two years ago, Air Force trailed by 20 and half, coming back to win. And the last three games in this series have been decided by combined seven points. It's Air Force against Utah coming up next. TJ, this supersonic cheeseburger is so great. I got to tell all my friends about this. You probably just did. Oh, yeah, I've told you. Mm -hmm. You know. This is good. I know. It's better burgers. Sonic's got them, others don't. Try a supersonic cheeseburger made with two patties, two slices of cheese, and not until you order it. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. During the game, complete strangers unite, holding their fingers aloft in celebration of their team's greatness. But after the game, some of those same fans use their fingers for other purposes. When you leave the game, try to exercise some patience. You might even qualify for an all-state safe driver discount because good sportsmanship should extend to the road. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? It's where the lights always shine and bright stars are born. The Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Join us December 23rd. Watch the big names from the Pac-10 and the Mountain West as they square off in the Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. For tickets, call 1-866-388-FANS or log on to lvbowl.com. It's time to get to the game and into the tradition. Today's Mountain West game is brought to you by Napa Auto Care Center. Napa, get the good stuff. Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Baskin Robbins Ice Cream. Who wants some ice cream? Conoco. Next time you're empty, fill up with Conoco. Quality Pro Clean Gasolines. Sonic. It's not just good. It's Sonic good. Pioneer Pure Vision Las Vegas Bowl. Join the Pac-10 of the Mountain West on December 23rd. For tickets, log on to lvbowl.com. Gorgeous day for football, and Kelly, let's take a look now to our keys to the game, brought to you by Napa Auto Care Centers. Well, Air Force has to get off to a fast start, and it's going to be hard today because there's no faster starting team in the entire country than, than Utah, and finish drives. Utah's very good defensively inside the red zone. Air Force has to take advantage of every situation. Well, you talk about the red zone uh, on more of that. Let's go sideline, and here's Anne Marie Anderson. Well, guys, Utah has been in the red zone 13 times this season, and they've scored every time. It's a point of pride with head coach Urban Meyer, who says he doesn't believe anybody practices red zone more than Utah. In fact, every Wednesday is red zone day at practice. Last year, when they were inside the 20, they scored 83% of the time. Now they have a sign up above that says, play to win. It's a reminder. It's a priority. 
win, and that's what the motto is today for both of these teams. Critical game. Urban Meyer, in his second year, had instant success at Utah, taking the Utes to their first outright conference championship in 46 years. Now, Utah won the toss. They deferred. Air Force will be receiving. Brian Borison will be kicking off the junior who's been having some growing problems. Alec Messerall going back deep for Air Force along with Darnell Stevens. It's going to be Messerall at the 10, up to the 15, to the 19, and maybe to the 20-yard line. And so Sean Carney, a guy who has amazed just everyone, his fourth career start. He has an air of confidence, remarkable poise for a 19-year-old first quarterback in Falcon history, Kelly, to start opening day. That's 49-year history of the academy. And game four, you're no longer a freshman. You're on board. You can't ride those things off as a rookie. And he's not playing like a rookie. He is not. And from the 20, that's where the Falcons will start. Adam Cole is the running back. Chris Holstage goes in motion. Carney to keep, and he'll get nothing. He's shut down at the 20. And it'll be second down and 10. Good reaction by Utah. Corey Dodds, a linebacker. Let's take a look now. Offensively, we talked about Holstage in motion. Carson Stair is starting in place of Robert McMenemy, who is out for the second game of the neck injury. Stevens has handled the ball only 11 times, but we expect to see more today. And that offensive line, Pat Edwards, became a starter in the first game when they lost Grantham there guard for the air to a broken leg. Come out throwing this time and the completion out to the 29-yard line, and that's Alec Messerol. They're about a yard short of the first down, third down coming up. Fafita might be the best nose guard in the Mountain West Conference. Panene had a 76-yard interception last week against Utah State. The linebacking core, Toon and Dodds, they're both all-conference candidates, and the heart and soul of the defense is at the safety spot, Morgan Scallett who is one of those guys who will be running all over the football field, and we'll be talking about him. On a third down, they hand off to Cole, and Cole has the first down for the Falcons to the 31-yard line. And so this is what they wanted to do was start fast, and they got their initial first down. And that is the way Air Force moves the football. A little different wrinkle is the ability for Carney to throw, and we've already seen that on second and long. He came out, and he's a very accurate passer, but they get into that third and short situations and just flat wear defenses out. One of the things that Air Force is doing now, they've gone back to that option pullback game, and it's been very effective. Carney on a sprint draw handoff to Stevens. Stevens out to the 35, the 40. He's close to the first down and knocked out of bounds. Beautiful deception that time by Carney, giving to Stevens Morgan Scally on the tackle. And the interesting thing, Gary, is that that's a sprint draw. You you correlate that with a passing football team, but that's what Carney brings to the table. Utah has to defend the pass today, and that time they gashed him on a sprint draw that you would normally see at some passing team down the road somewhere. That's right, and they have now another first down out to the 41-yard line. So two first downs for the Falcons in the initial series. Carney on the option. He's going to pitch it back to Stevens. Stevens to the 45, fights his way forward and gets close to the 48-yard line. We mentioned Stevens only 11 carries, but we expected them to go wide more today after going with a fullback so much in the first three games. And the reason they're going to have to go wide today is Utah has probably the best defensive front in the league, especially at the defensive tackles position. Buhuha and Fafita are two of the best in this entire conference. They're going to shut down that fullback, and that's going to expand this offense outside quickly. Second down coming up. A couple of yards to go for the first down. Cole is the fullback. Carney gives up. Stevens. Stevens fumbles it out of bounds, but it'll be enough, I think, for the first down. Stevens lost the handle, but no damage as the ball will be marked at the 46-yard line of Utah. First down, Air Force. And actually, Gary, I don't believe it's going to be a first down because he fumbled that ball forward out of bounds. It goes back to where he hit the ground. He can't forward the ball fumble. Well, let's see. And now. that line There's judge on the left side here is trying to straighten that out. So he may not, but they are going to mark it back at the 50, and you're on top of it. So it's going to be very close to the first down. Let's see if they're going to have to measure. It looks like they will not. It'll be third down and about a yard to go. And it's a good pickup because you cannot fumble it forward. Well, the 
the thing now, though, Gary, is it was really guesswork after that because no one marked where the ball carrier went down. Stevens hit the ground about two yards on the short side of the first down marker. So it's a third down there at the midfield strike. Once again, Gary, third and short. That's Air Force football. They have converted 51% on third down thus far. Carney's going to throw. He throws it up the field, and it's going to be caught at the 25, to the 15, to the 10. And eventually, Chris Holstead is caught there. So on a third down and less than a yard, Carney comes out throwing, and he delivers. Welcome to the new era of Air Force football, and it's because of the ability Sean Carney brings to the field. And that time, it's simply just a play-action pass, and Chris Holstead is the right wing back. He's going to slip down the middle of the field. Great Great throw, great catch, nice play. 38-yard gain, sets it up at the 12-yard line. And the give this time to Adam Cole, the fullback. Cole, who's missed one game this year with an injury, able to chug forward. This uh, Air Force team has had two games now where they've gotten a combined 100 yards out of the fullback position, and they've won both of them, and they want to continue that today. Line of scrimmage, the seven-yard line. Second down. They can pick up a first and goal at about the two. Carney giving straight ahead, and it's Cole again. Out of Dallas, Richardson High School, the senior, able to negotiate the five-yard line. It's going to bring up now a third down. Third down and about two yards to go for a first and goal. Cole, along with Dan Schaefer, will share that fullback spot. We'll see Jacoby Kendrick through the course of the day. Finished drives, Gary. This is an important play right here. Third down, two. Carney changing the play. Carney's going to keep. He's got the first and goal, fighting for the goal line. Did he get in? We have no indication of a touchdown yet. Air Force saying they got there it, is. and there it is. A late call, and the Falcons strike first. And Gary, a freshman at the Air Force Ca Academy, having the ability to change the play at the line of scrimmage, that's how he's grown in the first three weeks. They didn't give him that responsibility in, in the first couple of weeks of the season. He has it now, and that's a great example of it right there. And so he came in here sixth and rushing to the Mountain West Conference. Carney did, and Fisher to Barry said, we got to start fast, and they have. The opening series, Michael Greenaway now to attempt the point after out of the hold of Donnie Heaton. And the kick by Greenaway is up, and Air Force has a 7 to nothing lead. A very impressive drive, but the most impressive play was at third and one. They completed it for 38 yards. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers. He uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now, as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. My husband had finished his military tour before we got married. But now, because of recent events, he had to go back. And he'll be gone for a while. So I decided now's a great time to go back and get my medical training. Blair College can train you to be a medical assistant in less time than you think. Now is the right time to get started on the career you've always wanted. When my husband comes home, I'll have a great new career. Blair College can put you on the fast track to success. Call Blair College now at 800-577-7113. Hi, I'm Kelly. If you're ready to take your future where you want to go, it's time to make the phone call that can change your life. There's a world of opportunity just waiting for you, waiting to offer you a rewarding career. There's a demand for trained professionals, and a trained professional is exactly what you can be with the right education. A personalized, hands-on education can give you the knowledge and the confidence to succeed. It's time to put yourself first. Call the number on your screen. We're waiting to hear from you. Sean Carney and Air Force the 7-0 lead. Carney 
from five yards out on the keeper. An 80-yard drive. This was the tenth play of the drive, and you said it, Carney playing with confidence. You're right. He audible to that at the line of scrimmage. It's called a check with me. He has a couple of plays that he can go to, and the important thing is he's getting his football team in the right play at the right time, and it resulted in a great open to their game. How about that third down call? Third down. That's inches. what you would expect to see on the other side of the field. I know. Out of Urban Meyer. Greenaway is going to be kicking off now for Air Force. Morgan Scally going back deep. Steve Savoy is there with him. Here comes the kick. Savoy will go about two yards deep. He's going to bring it out. And he may pay for it and does at the 12. Good coverage that time by the Falcons flying down the field. And that's where we're going to have Alex Smith with his first snap of the game. Alex Smith, the guy who has a 12 and 1 record as a starter, and a guy who, in his first game this season, threw for a career high 359 yards against AM. And you can see there, he's 6'4, 212, but they have to work on him to keep weight up, and he carries the ball a great deal. The important thing is, is to keep him healthy. He's exposed to the defense a great deal in this offense. So now Utah down 7 to nothing, has the ball at the 13-yard line. They'll go to the spread formation. Burdett's a tight end in motion. Hand off to Marty Johnson, and Johnson able to wedge it out close to the 20. Let's look now offensively at the Utes. Steve Savoy, their home run hitter. Paris Warren last year led the conference in catches, and Marty Johnson is back in his seventh year. Up front, Kamoyatu, Chris Kamoyatu, is going to be playing on Sunday someday, a 338-pounder. It's going to be very well paid as well. Second down, five now for the Utes. Burdett goes in motion. Blake Burdett. Smith back to throw. Up the field, deflected. Getting in the way, that was John Rosinski. Rosinski got a hand on it. This is a 3-3-5 defense, and Mitchellin is playing very well at nose. Ryan Carter, one of the captains, a leader of the team. Rodzinski was dominating last week against UNLV, one of the best in the conference. Poland and Tybee, two big, strong, what they call Falcon backs. They both have interceptions. And all these guys better have their game face on because they're going to get it early and often against this spread Utah offense. Third down and five now for Alex Smith. He'll send Marty Johnson in motion. Smith, the junior, out of San Diego. Looking, he's got time up the field, complete for the first down. That catch is going to be made by Steve Savoy. Check that. Paris Warren and Warren's forward progress just short of the 25. Gary, what we've already seen out of Air Force defensively, they play a 3-3-5, as you said. There are two different choices for them, and they're both extremes. One is they're going to rush people and get after the quarterback, but what we're seeing thus far is choice number two, rush three, drop eight, and force Alex Smith to make good decisions. I don't know if that's wise or not because he's one of the best decision-making quarterbacks in the country. That's right. He's got great poise. First down now, just short of the 25. Smith rolling, trying to find some time, throws up the field incomplete. He tried to hit John Madsen, a big six-foot-five target across the 35. John Rosinski was there again along with Mark Carlson. And Rosinski, like you said, he had a dominating Fortis performance last week. These linebackers are going to have to be very active, contained, but do this at the end of the play. Put wood to their receivers and make them think about it. Air Force has to play physical football and not allow this spread Utah offense to get into rhythm. When they do, they're very nasty. They want to get some hits on Alex Smith through the course of the game. That's one of the keys, and they just did. Here's a handoff to Marty Johnson. Johnson able to wedge it out across the 30 to the 32, and it'll bring up third down and... For more on John Rosinski, here's Anne Marie. Well, guys, Air Force linebacker John Rosinski served a summer internship in Los Angeles for the Global Positioning System. GPS, you may know, is a worldwide global tracking system used for navigation. Rudd, as his teammates call him, was a systems control guy. It was a really serious program. They had a $185,000 grant for the government. And, Gary, how cool is this? They got to launch a rocket. <laughs> you know, 
Mike, as intense as he is, whatever he wants to do, I'd let him do. See, I'd... you know, they get to launch rockets at Air <laughs> Force. At Colorado State, we didn't even, we weren't even in charge of the lunchroom, <laughs> let alone launching some $20 million rocket. Boy, I tell you, Sonny Lubick won't want to hear that. But anyway, <laughs> it's a timeout now by Utah. They want to talk it over. Some confusion out there. Early going, it's Air Force on that 80-yard drive. The 265 horsepower Nissan Maxima. The 245 horsepower Nissan Murano. Performance, style, quality. Two vehicles in perfect harmony. Get $1,000 cash back on new 2004 Muranos and Maximas. $1,000 cash. Music to your ears. A lot of life happens in your car. That's why Conoco new quality ProClean gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco. Life happens between empty and full. TJ, this supersonic cheeseburger is so great. I gotta tell all my friends about this. You probably just did. Oh yeah, I've told you. Mm -hmm. You know. This is good. I know. Better burgers. Sonic's got them, others don't. Try a supersonic cheeseburger made with two patties, two slices of cheese, and not until you order it. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. To our Mountain West Conference. Welcome back to our Mountain West Conference coverage on ESPN Plus. Homecoming day here at Utah. Utah coming in here ranked 14th, undefeated. Air Force has won two in a row. What a series this has been. Both these teams, Kelly, have so much respect for each other. And that was in incredible to hear when you talk to these two staffs. I mean, it, it was a good brother neighborhood yesterday talking in these meetings. It was unreal, but that's exactly what they think about each other. Utah called a timeout. They're ready to go now. Third down two. Smith giving up straight ahead to Marty Johnson. He's going nowhere, and so Air Force shuts down the third down, and they're going to have to punt it away. Great action that time up front especially Ryan Carter. And an interesting contrast, what did Air Force do on third and one in an important time in their drive? And Utah does just the opposite. You would think that actually out of Utah that you're gonna see them do something a little bit more exciting. And that's actually Utah's version of the offense right there. And I think Alex Smith made a bad decision in the running game. And so back to punt will be Matt Kovakovic, punting away to Chris Sutton. Sutton the sophomore at a long view. Texas makes the fair catch at the 25-yard line. And so Air Force will get it for the second time. And now we're going to uh, talk about the All-State standings. All-State, good hands. Good hands make all the difference. Brought to you by All-State, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Air Force, first place right now. You're right, and that's where... Fisher to Barry likes to be on top looking down, but they have a long road ahead of them. But we talked about the importance of this time of the season for both of these teams. This is a very important game, but they have a couple more down the road that are just as important. Well, Air Force will go back to play Navy at home on Thursday. New Mexico goes to Albuquerque to tangle with the Lobos, who was the only team to defeat them here last year. And they put the wood to them. It wasn't a close game. I agree. And so the line of scrimmage will be at the 26th. Dan Schaefer now is coming at fullback. The last drive was 10 plays, 80 yards. It took three minutes and 47 seconds. Carney taking it over from five yards. And an interesting thing to keep track of early in this game is the wishbone offense of Air Force works from the inside out. Utah is so good up front, it's already expanded to the outside. Now can Utah's defense adjust? Carney now will come out with Schaefer behind him. He's going to give to Dan Schaefer, who's having a terrific season. He had a 131-yard game earlier this year against Eastern Washington. Buha is there to make the tackle. Sione Buha, and they're going to mark it now on a second down, seven yards to go. I tell you what, this Air Force team has gotten better. They're young. They have 11 freshmen playing significant roles. 
Interesting to see them growing up. Changing again at the line of scrimmage. A true freshman. Carney will keep. Comes across the 30 and to the 32. He wanted to pitch. Couldn't see it happening. Kept it. And Tommy Hackenbrook, the middle linebacker, over to make the stop. And, and watch, it's going to bring up third watch down. Watch number 22 right there, Bo Nagehi. He actually, what he played, it's called a slow play. You give the quarterback the impression that you're going to take him, and then you go take the pitch. And it's what allowed the interior defense to get to the quarterback. Great play. And Morgan Scally forces big time up the alley, and they're trying to block him to force someone else to, else to take that pitch. Well, Nagy, he's really going to be a hybrid safety today. They're going to have him support on the run at every opportunity. Here's a reverse pivot handoff to Schaefer, and Schaefer to the 35. Boy, that was an awkward-looking exchange. They're going to be about a yard short of the first down. It actually looked like Sean Carney turned the wrong way and almost lost track of the mesh with his fullback. Interesting decision right here. Yeah, fourth and a yard. And that's a great decision by Coach Fisher to Barry. It's about field position when you play Utah. Kyle Whittingham in his 11th year at Utah, 10 years as a defensive coordinator for the Utes. His team has led the conference in scoring defense for the last five years. Donnie Heaton to cut away. And Heaton is third in the conference of putting, puts it to the near side. It's gathered at the 30 to the 35-yard line and to the 37-39 eventually. Eric Weddle was the guy returning it, and Utah will have excellent field position. The special teams are always very important, but these two teams rely on field position a lot to set the table for their offenses. 39-yard putt, 10-yard return. Air Force has been able to strike first, lead it 7 to nothing. Where does reality end and pure vision begin? It all starts with a Pioneer plasma display. The purest color, the purest experience. Pure vision. Only from Pioneer. On the next Fear Factor. I hope you're not afraid of the dark. I hope you're not afraid to drown. And I hope you're not even a little bit claustrophobic. Plus, this is a Fear Factor martini. It's shaken and squirmed. Are you going to wash those worms? No, I am not. I'm sorry, guys. Next, Fear Factor. Fear Factor, Monday at 9 on UPN 57. accommodations with you. See Lexus of Colorado Springs. Seven to nothing Air Force ESPN pay-per-views premier college football package. ESPN game plan has long been available to watch through your local cable or satellite provider, but now for the first time, ESPN game plan is available at ESPN.com to watch games online. It's the same 150 games you can see on your TV, but now you can watch on your computer. Go order. Go to ESPN.com and search Game Plan. We come back now. Utah down 7 to nothing. Hand off to Marty Johnson. Johnson spins his way to the 49-yard line. Johnson, a guy who got his first start last week, a guy who's come back from alcohol abuse, been on a short lease by urban meyer and he has responded very well he's doing absolutely everything that's asked of him and he's just now starting to get ramped up going from a real eye back in his career earlier to a true back in a spread offense and he's starting to learn this gain, offense now gain of seven it'll be second and three now for the youth smith from the spread four wideouts gives to johnson again and this time not much doing got to the 50 and that's it 
Cameron Hodge made the tackle with Kelly Stoffer and Ann Marie Anderson. I'm Gary Bender. Welcome to Rice Eccles Stadium at Salt Lake. It's homecoming for Utah. Critical game of the Mountain West Conference. Five and a half minutes to go here in this first quarter. Air Force took the opening drive 80 yards. They lead it seven to nothing. But now Utah starting to settle in offensively. One of the things that we need to set is Utah likes to run the football. This offense isn't about throwing it as much as it is about balance. From the 50, third down, two yards to go. Smith looks, throws, he completes it. Catch made by Paris Warren. That'll be a first down as he's inside the Air Force 40-yard line. Well, let's go down to Anne-Marie. Well, Gary, you were talking about you running back Marty Johnson. He's having the least newsworthy season of his career, and for that, he's grateful. As you said, in the past few years, he's had two season-ending injuries. He's been arrested twice for driving under the influence of alcohol, served 30 days of jail, and undergone treatment for alcohol abuse. He has a new tattoo on his forearm which says, against all odds, and against some pretty big odds, Johnson's have played more games this season than he has in any previous year. And I tell you, he's in the best shape of his career. He's lost about 15 pounds, and he can be a force. He's a little rusty. Here he is dragging a tackler. No, a fake beautifully by Alex Smith. Smith kept it. Looked like Johnson might have it. Jordan Wilkie eventually knocked him out of bounds, and you talk about deception. Beautiful job by Alex Smith. The spread offense is about deception, but it's also about the quarterback running the football. That's Utah's version of the option. Alex Smith reads the contained man, the left end on the line of scrimmage, and if he runs after the fullback, he simply pulls it right there, and then he can do this. Deceptive, he can run the football. He's very tough, but it also exposes your star quarterback to the defense a great deal. He takes a lot of punishment, but he's tough. That's a 20-yard game. Alex Smith, the guy who's exposed a lot, but he's been able to hold up under all the punishment. This time he gives to Marty Johnson. Nice start, stop, move, and he gets to the 12. A fumble. The ball has come out. And who's got it? Has Air Force recovered? It looks like they have. Mark Carlson has recovered the football for the Falcons. I'll tell you what, if, a, if an official gave the indication that there was a fumble recovery, I missed it, partner. I don't know where it was, but we'll see right here if the ball indeed is on the ground. This is what Marty Johnson brings to this team. A little soft hip right there, makes the guy miss, gets upfield right there. The ball is definitely out. Utah does not turn the ball over very often. No. I think that's number two on the entire season. And this is a game about field position, about tackling, and thirdly, about turnovers. And their other interception, their only other turnover, was their backup quarterback. So now the Falcons will take over the 12. Carney pitches back, dangerous pitch. Anthony Butler gets back and gets on it. Butler, who has not played the last two games due to an injury, very alertly recovered as Carney's errant pitch almost turned that ball over. And Gary, the bottom line is, he's still a freshman. You know, he, he's grown up and very poised for a young man, but this is simply a bad decision. When you're in the grasp of a defender, do not pitch the football. He almost gave back the gift that, he, that his football team just received. Better decision-making is called for in that situation. Carlson with the fumble recovery, a guy who now lives in Colorado Springs with his dad, who graduated from the Air Force Academy with that big turnover. Adam Cole now tries to get him a little breathing room. He pounds it out to the 14-yard line. It's still going to be about nine yards short of the first down. And it's interesting to see how Chuck Peterson, the offensive coordinator at Air Force, treats this young man at quarterback. After a bad decision, that was a true fullback give. There was no read. There was no other option. And that's how he treats him. Get him settled down a little bit, take a decision out of his hands, and now let him get ramped back up again. Third and nine for the Falcons. 14-yard line. Three and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Carney in trouble, giving ground, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Boy, I tell you, Utah had that one smelled out. They swarmed on Carney as he tried to turn up the field. Fafita was there. Boo-hoo-ha was there. Boo -hoo -ha Both of those was guys. <laughs> Boo-hoo-ha from his defensive tackle position. Look at him right there. We're talking about a 315-pound man, and he was quick off the ball and absolutely annihilated the blocking scheme, which actually it looked like was a mistake. There wasn't anybody that really looked to block him, but he's quick. He gets upfield. He's active on the offensive line side of the line of scrimmage. Great play. Donnie Heaton, the junior out of Waterloo, Iowa, put away. Weddle goes back to the 50-yard line. So Utah should get very good field position. 
The snap was good. The boot is a beauty. He hammers it. Whittle trying to get back. It bounces over his head to the 10, to the 5. What a punt by Donnie Heaton. His longest prior to today was 62 yards against California. This is a 90-yard punt. Surely that's got to be a record somewhere. That was unreal. I was just going to say that even though Utah turned the ball over, they're going to end up most likely with great field position. Guess what? 90-yard punts nullify great field position. I mean, this was a rocket. It turns over in the air like a good pass does, and Naga, he had absolutely no chance to catch that missile. Well, I'll tell you right now, that is a clutch punt because the field position they thought they were going to get does not come about. That is a Mountain West Conference record, a 90-yard punt by Heaton. Quentin Ganther is now coming at running back. Ganther's got the football. He's the junior college kid. Bounces at 30. What a run to the 37-yard line. Coach Irving Meyer talked a lot about not only Marty Johnson and the work that he's getting done, but Quinton Gander gives them a, a change-up, really, to their running back position. At 5'10", 210 pounds, you get nothing but shoulder pads and kneecaps right there. You better bring your lunch if you want to tackle him. He's low to the ground. He knows what he's doing, and he's a very hard runner, like Marty Johnson is. Richard Bell, the defensive coordinator coordinator of Air Force can't like that. Remember in the California game, they had 19 missed tackles. They don't want to start that trend here today. We have a flag on the play, but uh, that was quite a run by Ganther, who played at Citrus Community College last year in California. All start. 23, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. That's referee Gerald Wright. Let's look at Ganther again. You were talking about all you see is kneecaps and what else? Shoulder pads. I mean, 5'10", 210 pounds, he's very compact, a low center of gravity, a low running style, and that's what you should get out of running backs. Good running backs don't take blows. They deliver blows, and he did on that great run a minute ago. First and 15 now for the Utes after the penalty. Four wideouts. Smith giving off straight ahead, and it's going to be Ganther again. Ganther out to the 37-yard line. He'll be dropped there. So they're back to about the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to bring up a second down. Gary, we have a, an interesting contrast between the two offensive schemes here. We know what Air Force does, the flex bone. It's about double, triple options given to the fullback. But Utah runs a ton of options themselves. They just do it in a different way. They do it out of the shotgun. But Alex Smith still has a couple of options. He can give it to the running back, or he can pull it out and run around the end. We've seen both so far. Second down, 10. Ganther still in the backfield along with Alex Smith. The four wideout package once again. Smith, gift to Ganther, and Air Force is there. Excellent reaction. Overton Spence, the man who was acquitted of a steroid-related charge and is now returned for his third game as we take a look now at the ESPN USA Today Top 25. Oh, my. You think, I think LSU's I, upset about the Auburn loss. Yeah, I think a, a missed extra point will do that to you. You <laughs> just hope you're not the next team playing them. And you can see Purdue. Purdue is really having a remarkable year. Maryland beating up on Duke in the ACC. And it's Auburn's continuing unbeaten thus far. North Carolina, by the way, will be playing Utah after an open date. Third down and nine. Smith to throw. Falling down with Savoy. Steve Savoy fell down, could not get to his feet. And uh, Utah's going to have to punt the football. And Gary, that's, that's what makes it so hard to pick up third and long situations. It doesn't take much of a hiccup to make you punt the football, and it's simply, look at the right hand of the screen right there. Steve Savoy gets a little back on his heels, doesn't set his butt down before he makes his break. His feet go out from under him. The result is they're punting the football again. And, of course, they have the field turf here. The not natural grass, but everybody seems to like he the surface. He needed natural grass, I think, on that play right there. Big rush, and they almost got to that punt by Kavakovich. Chris Sutton called him for the fair catch. Air Force, since 1990, has blocked 88 kicks, and they were very close there. They were, and they take advantage of every opportunity they have in the kicking game, and they tried to get there. They just didn't quite do it. But Utah is just as good. They're very short up. Watch the protection up in front of the punter right there. They're doing everything they can, Air Force is, to get over top. Close, but close doesn't count in the game of football. Boy, I tell you what, though, Kabakovich has to be a aware next time so Air Force will have it 
They still have a 7 to nothing lead. They have it at the 21-yard line. Carney with three wideouts on this play. He's going to toss. He completes it to the 25. It's Meserol. And Alec Meserol gets up to the 30, about a yard short of the first down. Dave Carney is the kind of guy who said this week, every time he throws the football, I get more confidence. And you can see why. He's a very accurate passer. And actually, confidence as a quarterback translates into accuracy. But that's something very simple. But Air Force just simply couldn't do that in years past. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. And Air Force, who took the opening drive 80 yards, and the Falcons have got to be happy with the first 15 minutes in this critical game in the Mountain West Conference race. During the game, complete strangers unite, holding their fingers aloft in celebration of their team's greatness. But after the game, some of those same fans used their fingers for other purposes. When you leave the game, try to exercise some patience. You might even qualify for an all-state safe driver discount because good sportsmanship should extend to the road. That's all state stand. Are you in good hands? This guy. I don't know what I was thinking. I tried to tell you, genius. I can't believe I'm in this situation. We're not having fun anymore. I'm feeling your pain. I don't know what to do. Hey, look at me. We all make mistakes. Told you about the tires, huh? Yeah. Should have gotten Cooper. Buying tires is a big decision. Next time, get everything you want. Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. My husband had finished his military tour before we got married. But now, because of recent events, he had to go back, and he'll be gone for a while. So I decided now's a great time to go back and get my medical training. Blair College can train you to be a medical assistant in less time than you think. Now is the right time to get started on the career you've always wanted. When my husband comes home, I'll have a great new career. Blair College can put you on the fast track to success. Call Blair College now at 800-577-7113. Hi, I'm Kelly. If you're ready to take your future where you want to go, it's time to make the phone call that can change your life. There's a world of opportunity just waiting for you, waiting to offer you a rewarding career. There's a demand for trained professionals, and a trained professional is exactly what you can be with the right education. A personalized, hands-on education can give you the knowledge and the confidence to succeed. It's time to put yourself first. Call the number on your screen. We're waiting to hear from you. I'm Rich. Yeah, I'll be right there. They've left little room for compromise. Headlights that turn on curves. Impressive. The new RX from Lexus. They are waiting for you. Continuing to put the world on notice. See Lexus of Colorado Springs. We're ready to go. Second quarter. Air Force up 7 to nothing. They have the football. They have now second down. Two yards to go. Dan Schaefer is coming at fullback. Utah historically has been a fast starting team, but it has not happened here today. They were shut out in the first quarter. And so when you're on the road, it's always nice to play out in front. Absolutely. Take the fans out of it early and give Utah a question mark in their head. Darnell Stevens. Going in motion, Carney wanting to throw, scrambling around, trying to run up the field. He's going to get the first down. At, well, he isn't. He gave some ground. Now he got it. Second, third effort by Carney. Hackenbrook over to make the tackle as Carney scrambling and picking up the first down. Yeah, he had it. He didn't have it again, and then he had it once, one more time. But Corey Dodds, number 93, you'll see right at the end on the left side of your screen, right there, has to stay home and contain. That's his responsibility, because Carney has the ability, obviously, in this option flex bone offense to run around quite a bit. I tell you, you just have to remind yourself this guy is a freshman. John Carney doing it all. As he hands off this time to Dan Schaefer, the senior fullback out of Lakewood, Colorado. Let's go back to the real gutsy call of a third and one to set up the touchdown. Yeah, that's third and one. Sean Carney, play action pass. 
and Chris Holstead, it's number 33 right there on your screen, slips out of the backfield, and it resulted in, this is the result right here. Cardi makes another good decision. That touchdown was an audible at the line of scrimmage and gave Air Force a quick start, which they needed in this football game. One of the keys to this game. Holstead's on the end of that 38-yard completion. Here's Carney, makes the pitch, keeps the ball, and dives across the 40 to the 42. You can see this guy not only can throw the ball, but he can run with it very well out of North Olmstead, Ohio. He was in prep school last year. Comes out of a big high school program, which prepared him to become a starter in this his first season. Right, and that there's a lot to be said for that. And he also went to prep school. So age-wise, he's not really a true freshman. Eligibility-wise, he indeed is at the NCAA level. But he has the maturity of a guy who's been playing this game for a long time. Third and two now for the Falcons. Gives up, and is that going to be enough for the first down? Schaefer pounding it forward. He did get the first down. Sometimes you don't think the fullback's got much, but he'll get two, three yards, just moves the pile, as we now have 13-13 to go here in the second quarter. Air Force took the opening kickoff, moved it 80 yards. As an end result, they have the lead, and we welcome you. Along with Kelly Stopper and Anne-Marie Anderson, I'm Gary Bender. In this, the conference opener for Utah, the second straight road game in the Mountain West Conference for Air Force. Hand off now to Stevens. Stevens slides out across the 50. He's in Utah's into the field at the 49-yard line. You know, it's easy for people to understand that the Utah offense is a spread offense and they're, they're very diversified, but Air Force is as well. They have three key running game or plays, but they also can expand that and give you different looks out of different formations. And we have an injured player. That's Jonathan Fanene, who had that big interception last week against Utah State. He's been a major surprise. Hope he's going to be all right. He's up and a little groggy, but they'll take him out for at least one play. And that's the one man that Kyle Whittingham, the defensive coordinator at Utah, pointed to. Because of his improvement, it's improved this entire defense. And that's what one player can do, especially a defensive end. Make big plays, force things at the line of scrimmage, and he's doing a tremendous job. Well, we mentioned uh, he had an interception for a touchdown. It was 76 yards. This game was played in Logan, Utah against the Aggies. Deflected up in the air. And this is a dream for a defensive lineman. Yeah, good hand-eye coordination, but he runs out of gas. But you'll have to forgive him at 6'3", 290 pounds. But he'll take it. And so we come back to the action with Steven straight ahead. And Steven's going to be okay, short yeah, of the first down by a couple of yards. And it'll bring up the third down for Air Force. What Air Force is doing here, Kelly, time of possession. They've had the football a lot here in the early part of the game. Time of possession. And both of these head coaches, Coach Irving Meyer and Fisher DeBerry, preach time of possession. But Air Force has to have it. They don't have the horses on their roster to play a long football game. They have to shorten it, meaning hang on to the rock. Third down to... Here is Carney on the option behind his fullback, pins it against the grain. He breaks out at the 30, 20. He could go 10, 5, touchdown Air Force. <laughs> oh, my. I'll tell you what, that, that young man is special. And remind everybody he is a true freshman. He's going to be here a while. I know Urban Meyer doesn't like to hear that. Kyle Whittingham sure, certainly doesn't like to hear that. He's a special player. 47 yards. And I mean, he cut it against the grain. He had eyes that a lot of running backs would like to have. The good running backs, that's exactly right. Field vision is very important because a lot of times there isn't anything at the point of attack. You have to make something happen. Sean Carney made it happen right there. Green away now for the point after at the 11.43 mark of the second quarter. It's good. Flag on the play here, Gary. We'll see uh, if we have to do this all over again. How about Carney? He has not thrown an incompletion. He's 3-3 three three for 55 yards, and he's rushed for 53 yards. He's been very precise. The only real bad decision is when he pitched the ball. Like he's got when a he was in the grasp problem. of the defensive end, and That's he put right. that ball on the ground. But other than that, he's been very efficient. Offside, 29 defense, decline, points good. And so Air Force with a shocking 14 
to nothing lead. And let's watch Carney again. You take it, Kelly. It was something special. There is nothing at the point of attack. Watch the eyes to the left. He makes a couple of people miss, and then it's nothing between him and the goal line. Great decision making. Here's that Johnson file. The cappuccino blast makes a tasty pick-me-up. I need a cappuccino blast. We blend our coffee with rich ice cream at Baskin Robbins. Who wants some ice cream? At Arctic Cat, we do things differently. We build ATVs from first-hand experience. We hunt. We farm. We fish. We ride. And during our Wheel and Adela sales event, there's no better time than right now to ride off on a new ATV. You'd never hear this from John, but he owns the best car repair shop in town. He's got a well-deserved reputation for getting it right the first time. He listens to his customers. He uses top quality Napa parts, and he backs up his work every time. Now, as much as we'd like to take credit for it, a shop like John's isn't this good because there's a Napa sign out front. Fact is, there's a Napa sign out front because John's shop is this good. Here's that Johnson file. The cappuccino blast makes a tasty pick-me-up. I need a cappuccino blast. We blend our coffee with rich ice cream at Baskin Robbins. Who wants some ice cream? Well, they're uh, looking at the shoulder pad of Carney. It's a stunned crowd here at Rice Eccles Stadium, a home coming crowd, and they're stunned because of this play, a 47-yard run by Sean Carney. He makes a lot of people miss. One of the keys for Utah was to tackle somebody. They can't miss tackles, but it's understandable. That guy made a great decision against the grain, and you talk about a fast start, a good start uh, for Air Force. Second rushing touchdown. He has over 100 yards in offense already. So I would say it's a pretty good beginning, and this is his second start on the road. Greenaway kicking off. It's going to be Savoy inside the 5, up to the 10, 15, 20, 25. Lowers his head out to the 27-yard line. And uh, more on Sean Carney from Anne Marie Anderson. Well, guys, we've all been kind of marveling about Sean Carney's performance despite being a freshman. Well, at the academy, being a freshman, you have a lot of other things that you have to do, too, including basic cadet training. Well, every incoming freshman must do it. The individual undergoes six weeks of intensive survival training in the surrounding mountains. While you might think it would keep a young man in shape, it really requires a different kind of muscle work than the fast twitch muscles required on the field. Offensive coordinator Chuck Peterson said it took a while for Kearney to get his quickness back. Well, I tell you, he's got it back now. Here's the snap to Alex Smith up the field. He completes the pass about a yard short of the first down. Travis, Travis Latondris over there to make the catch. He's been hurt, a very precision route runner, a guy who uh, Urban Meyer says we really trust him. We think he's a very good football player. So it's going to be a gain of nine. And Air Force Gary is still content to rush three, drop eight, make Utah's receivers find the open void in that zone and make Alex Smith put accurate passes on him like he did that time right there. And Alex Smith can't throw accurate passes. Start of the day, he had 21 career touchdown passes, only three interceptions, gives to Marty Johnson. Johnson able to get the first down. He only needed a yard, and Ryan Carter, the senior out of Waterloo, Wisconsin, made the tackle. So Utah just trying to regroup a little bit right now. They're trying to find stunned. Yeah. Right. They're trying to find something that works there, Gary, and they haven't found it yet. Utah's spread offense under Irving Meyer is an offense that needs to be in sync. It needs to be in rhythm. They have zero right now. So Smith in a catch-up mode has Marty Johnson in the backfield with him. Four wideouts once again. 10:40 to go in the first half. Smith the throw. Going deep. Up the field. Wide open. Great catches made by John Madsen. For a moment, it looked like it might be overthrown, but Madsen, who is six foot five, a guy who did not play high school football, latched on, and that's a 44-yard gain. What's going on in the backfield right there 
is play action pass. It made the defender peek inside, which is a no-no for a defensive back. You don't care what's going on in the defensive or in the offensive backfield. You need to pay attention to your coverage. And right there, Air Force did not do that adequately in their secondary. I want to tell you, this Utah team can play catch up in a hurry. They've got a lot of weapons. First down now inside the 20. Johnson, the running back, 14 to nothing Air Force. Here's Smith to throw again, throwing in the back of the end zone and complete nothing open that time. Savoy, the intended receiver, but very well covered that time by the Falcons. And Savoy fell down again in the back of the end zone. Remember, on third and long, he fell down earlier in this game. He might have to get some new shoes on, but Alex Smith was simply making a good decision and throwing that football away. Alex Smith makes good decisions. He's a guy who is a great decision maker, the junior who played in the same high school team with Reggie Bush of USC. You can see in the red zone how effective Utah is. Second down. Smith on the option, pitches back. Harris Warren, and he may be about a yard short of the first down. Carson Bird, a freshman out of Sharpsburg, Georgia, over to make the tackle for Air Force. And we know what the triple option looks like on the offensive or the Air Force side of the field. This is Utah's triple option. Option number one, Marty Johnson. Option number two, Alex Smith, run the football. Option number three, pitch the football to Paris Warren. And a pretty good reaction that time by the Falcons. Bird in particular. It's going to be further to go, and I thought it's going to be third down and almost four yards to go. So again, in the red zone, they have been magnificent. And here's a big third down in the red zone. Four wideouts. They're coming after him. Low snap. Smith throws it. Completes it. Latondras makes the catch. First and goal at the three. And Gary, this is the day. The, the hard part about defending the spread offense in Utah, Air Force has to decide whether they set back in the zone or come after him. This time, both linebackers, Braley and Rosinski, are coming after the quarterback, but it leaves more voids in that zone scheme in the secondary, and this receiving core is very good at finding that void. First and goal now to three. Two wideouts to the near side. One of those is Alex Smith. Marty Johnson's going to take the snap. And Johnson stays on his feet. He's in. Touchdown, Utah. Partner, that was great recognition right there. We saw last year in the Air Force game, it was tight end Ben Moa taking direct snaps in the backfield. That time, it was Marty Johnson, a different look. The result is that efficiency in the red zone is intact. They were 13 out of 13 coming into this drive. 12 touchdowns, make it 13. Their slogan in the red zone is play to win, and they played to win on that drive. Borenson, the point after is good. There is a flag inside the five-yard line. Boy, that was an impressive drive. A big catch by Madsen. Smith was now 5 of 9, 81 yards in this game, and you can see Utah now getting up off the ground and starting to fight back in this game. Their offense is starting to get into a rhythm a little bit, and that's bad news for Air Force's defense. Legal substitution on the defense. Fine. Points good. And so the point will stand. It's 14-7 Air Force. And Urban Meyer's team playing catch-up. And what a football game we appear to have. Yeah, hi. I was wondering, can I get a, uh, a wake-up call tomorrow morning, please? Uh, 8.30 a.m.? Uh, yeah. The thing is, I was wondering, can I, can I get that to go to my, my cell phone instead of my room? Oh, uh, well, here's the thing. I, 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 I'm not quite sure if I'm going to be in my room tomorrow, so I, I, just, I just thought if, if, if you could call my cell phone, it would uh, cover all, all bases. Please? Hi, Mary. Yeah. I'll be right there. They've left little room for compromise. Headlights that turn on curves. Impressive. from Lexus. They are waiting for you. Continuing to put the world on notice. See Lexus of Colorado Springs. Pebble Beach. Pinehurst. When you look at courses like those, you could be looking at some very expensive golf. But fortunately, 
you're looking at the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail. And here's something you won't see anywhere else. That'll be $40, sir. Per hole? Come to Alabama, where greens fees start at just $40. Visit 800alabama.com and learn about all the wonders of Alabama. All right, come back now at Rice Eccles Stadium. We're going to look at that big catch. Alex Smith to John Madsen. And keep an eye on the corner right there. Number 21 is Mark Carlson. Number 19 is Jordan Wilkie coming into the screen. What Jordan did is he looked into the backfield and responded to the play action pass. The safety 21 Carlson wasn't able to come off the hash and help him. Result was a big play. 44 yard players, Alec Mesherall, and he's hit hard as he first shot to the 25. So they went 73 yards in seven plays, and you just saw the big play a moment ago as uh, Grady Marshall made the tackle. And with uh, my partner Kelly Stoffer and Ann Marie Anderson on the sideline. Welcome to.